What makes somebody who's not an A-type personality want to stand up in front of 750 people and deliver a speech? <laughs> it's a desire to share a passion, something greater than oneself. We all have passions, whether they're kept close to your heart or well-known by the people around you. But too often, the demands of our daily lives make them play second fiddle, unless something stops us. What stopped me was a brain tumor, which I jokingly refer to as my qualification for being a TEDx speaker. <laughs> but it gave me a gift of the time to look inside myself to find out what's important. And what I'm passionate about is using the internet as a force for positive change, because it truly is the most amazing and extraordinary communications tool we have ever known. I've spent the past 14 years of my life designing the websites that market some of Hollywood's biggest movies. These projects are designed to evoke an emotional response in the viewer, because we know it's emotion that makes people want to take action, and it's emotion that makes things memorable. When you think of some of the most memorable moments in your life, chances are very good that heightened senses, heightened, heightened emotion were involved. For instance, your first kiss, or maybe your last kiss, the birth of a child, or the passing of someone you love. But when you think of browsing the internet, do you think of that as a sensory, emotional experience? Probably not. Chances are you go online to get things done, or maybe as a replacement for TV. But if there's a cause or a message that you're passionate about, and you want to engage and keep an audience online, you need to develop a sensory, emotional experience for them, so they have something visceral that they can walk away with. And if you do this, you'll be bypassing the cognitive mind, and you'll be appealing to the place within us that is really the source of our wants, needs, and desires. And this is very powerful in this medium. The way I approach that, and if you're thinking about a project or you're involved in a project, to approach this by not thinking of it as a website or an application but think of it as a human being. Think of your website or an application as a human being, an entity, with a head, a heart, and a, even a soul. And starting with the head, your website needs to have a voice. Every movie, for me and my work, every movie has a unique voice. For instance, um, Martin Scorsese's Hugo, which was the story of a young boy who lives in a Paris train station, it was innocent and wondrous and historic. Or Peter Jackson's adaptation of The Lovely Bones, which follows the tale of a young girl after her brutal murder, was tragic, healing, and ethereal all at the same time. So every movie has a unique voice. Each one of you has a unique voice. And you want to be honest about what that voice is and what you want to portray, because then your audience will feel like they're interacting with a real human being as opposed to a bunch of computer code. You know, again, if you think like when you go online, you might be on Amazon.com or eBay or one of these uber-huge websites with millions of pages and millions of people interacting with it at any one time. But in that moment, it's just you and the website. It's actually very intimate. It's, it's kind of the context is already created to be set up for this intimate, personal connection. And then moving on to the heart. What does your website love? Who does your website love? And who loves it in return? And how does it love? If we understand how these entities love, then we know more about who they are. And again, we have a, more of an opportunity to connect on a personal level. And then thinking of the body, the appearance. If your website is expected to stand up in front of 
750 or thousands or even millions of people, shouldn't the same attention be placed upon its wardrobe as if it were getting married or even running for president? Does it look kind of disheveled or is it well put together? And each time you go back and visit, is it have a similar style? And then the whole package, thinking about this entity 10, 20 years from now, how has it affected the world around it? Who's it touched? And how has it been touched in return? What's the story that you can write? What's the vision that you can put in place that will carry it 10, 20 years down the road? If you follow these simple steps, as I do in my work, you'll create the foundation from which to communicate to this never-before-seen audience that we have online in a way that is personal and memorable and intimate and, in effect, more powerful. So I want to quickly share with you a few people that I know, just single one or two people, who are using the Internet to make their worlds better and make our world a better place. Most of you probably think the way a woman gives birth is a human right. But in many places around the world, it's not. Women either have no access to health care, or they're forced into hospital births where they're routinely cut without consent and without necessity. Hermine Hayes Klein is an American attorney who lives in Holland, and she had a wonderful experience giving birth to two healthy children at home. After this experience, she decided to create the first ever conference in support of the rights of birthing mothers. So what Hermine is doing for human rights in childbirth is creating a place online where mothers, birth professionals, can collaborate on these very important issues. So Hermine is using the internet to bring a greater global awareness to the power of natural childbirth. A social issue that the web can shift is domestic violence. Currently, there's a non-standardized process that admits victims of domestic violence into the system that's set up to support them. I have a close friend in California, Hilary Larkin, who sees over 600 domestic violence and sexual abuse cases each year in the emergency department where she works. So Hilary had the idea to develop a web-based reporting tool that not only instantly notifies the police department with valuable case information when victims come into the hospital, but because of the standardized reporting, it's also building an incredibly valuable historical database surrounding this issue, which, moving forward, supports the victims and supports the whole issue of domestic violence. So, Hillary knows nothing about technology, but her close friend Henry Ivey does, and together, Hillary and Henry are using the Internet to make the lives of domestic violence victims better, improve the lives of the healthcare workers, and even make the police officers' jobs safer. And in contrast to the national media, which is mostly full of bad news, I had the idea to develop Good Machina, which is a social gratefulness platform designed to focus on showcasing everything that's right in the world based on individual human experience. And it does this by extracting data from the user's gratitude journals and creating a visual mural. So in all three of these projects, we are creating that persona that sits behind the public voice, if you will. We are creating the entity that has the heart, the soul, the compassion, so that our communication will be more intimate, more personal, and therefore more effective. So this is really the... Like I said, I've been doing this for 14 years, designing these websites, marketing films. But truly, the most valuable thing that I've learned is the human component. The Internet, and this is the, the important part, combined with honest human emotion, intimate, personal human con connection, is the greatest place to tell our stories, never-before-seen place to tell our stories because of the potential audience we have. And I think you'd agree that the most important stories to tell 
of those that move in others' heart or help each other grow. And the really cool thing <laughs> about all of this is that all the tools are literally right at our fingertips. Anybody, anybody, and I mean this, I see this stuff every day, anybody can actively participate in designing our future. So, how do you want that future to look? And more importantly, how do you want it to feel? <laughs>